This is 1.3 notes, algebraic expressions, the goal being to be able to interpret parts of an expression, such as terms, factors, and coefficients. After taking a couple minutes to look over this problem, who has a thought on how to do it? Reynolds. Great. So what did you highlight or underline? <coughs> Okay. Like using a different like way of telling out twenty dollars per dollar, week a dollar. Okay. Anything else? That was really information for each day. Okay, so such as on Tuesday studio time would be about four hours. So it's, I put four in there. Okay, did you do Monday how many hours for studio? There would be four there. Uh huh. Four on Wednesday. It's by uh, noon to 4 p.m. That's about what, five to six more hours? Four more hours, right? Okay, cool. So, how many total hours did we work at the salon? 20. Good, 20 hours. And how much do we earn? You underline that, yeah, $8 per hour. So how much should we earn by working at the salon in one week? $160. Good. How about the dog walking? There's something in uh, this problem that I would have underlined. Liberty? $20 per week for dog. Or is that what it said? We did underline that. What yeah. else, Jazzy? Just three dogs. Yes, that's important because it says per dog. I need to know how many dogs I'm walking. So we do that. We do 20 times 3, and then uh, 3 times that, I guess 3 again. So it's 20 times 3, and then you get 180, right? So actually, it doesn't matter how many times you walk the dogs. It just matters how many dogs you walk in the week. Oh, so it, <coughs> oh, per, oh, I'm stupid. Nope, that's okay. That's part of... Uh, figuring this stuff out, they did that to try and suck you in, putting you it on there three she times. Well, she still does make pretty good money. So we've got the $60 in a week for dog walking, the $160 in a week for being a receptionist. So that's 100 wait, 220 $220 per week. So the thing I had before that, because I erased that, and I had that same. How many weeks do we have in this summer vacation? Ten weeks. So we multiply by ten, we get two, $2,200 in the summer. Who's inspired to walk dogs this summer? Yes. It's good money. Adds up. So to model a situation with an algebraic expression, do the following. following identify the unknowns. that suggest variables, then define one or more variables, one or more variable, variables, represent the actions using the variables, and the operations. So you might think, well, we didn't use any variables in the previous scenario, but where could we have used a variable? Equals x, okay, for the total. Uh, anywhere else? No, no. Come on, dude. <laughs> uh, How about for the number of dogs? Wait, we already knew it was three, though. We did in this scenario. You're right. Um, but if we wanted to apply this universally to, like, 50 different people that are doing, doing the same two jobs, mm -hmm. then we could... Say, oh, if we just put a D, and then we could, anyone could fill in their number of dogs that they walked in a week. And then where else? I'm guessing since we're doing hours. Uh, yeah, H for hours. Yeah. So this 20 hours here, that could change per person or even per week. Anything else? Like how many weeks? Good. How many weeks? Maybe we have a different schedule 
different schools have different number of weeks maybe in the summer that they have to work so we could apply variables to that situation let's take a look at some more examples example one to start with twenty dollars you start with twenty dollars and then you save six dollars each week what algebraic expression models the total amount you save what would be a, a variable we could use in this situation S for save if you wanted to do the total amount you saved. But what else, what is unknown? We're just writing the expression, not an equation. W, w for weeks. weeks. Okay, good. So here, each week, we don't know how many weeks, so we're going to say W is the number of weeks. We could write this as 20 plus 6W. Example two, what is the value of the expression for the given values of the variables? So here we're just substituting in a negative four for A and a five for B. So we're going to rewrite that, plugging in the values. And here, since we're simplifying, you actually do order of operations forward. When we're solving an equation, we do it in reverse. So 7 times negative 4 and 4 is 0. 3 times 5 is 15 minus 8. So 7 times 0 is 0. 15 minus 8 is 7. Then for B, we're plugging in a 1 for X and a 1 for Y, so we have 1 half plus 1 squared. 1 squared is what? 1. 1, good. So we have 1 half plus 1, which is 1 and a half, or 1.5. Mm -hmm. C, we plug in the 6 and the negative 3, so we have 2 times 6 squared minus, here's the key, whenever you have a negative that's squared, we put it in parentheses. So your calculator is going to tell you the wrong answer if you don't include these parentheses. Your calculator is going to tell you, if you just put in negative 3 squared, it's going to tell you the answer is negative 9. And we know that's not true because squaring something is multiplying it times itself. A negative times a negative is always a positive. So when you include these parentheses, you get a positive 9, which is what you should get. So now I should have included more space. 6 squared is 36 minus 9. I heard somebody say, well, that should become a plus. Not yet, because the squaring, think of PEMDAS, exponents come before subtraction. Oh, yeah. 36 minus 9 is 27, so we have 2 times 27 over 3. I like to make things easy on myself, keep things keep the numbers smaller, so I'm looking at 27 and 3, and I'm thinking they have a greatest common factor of 3. So I could reduce this, divide by 3 here, divide by 3 here. That becomes a 1. 27 divided by 3, that becomes a 9. Yes. Nice. Big old hand on the screen. All right, example 3. Any basketball fans in the room? OK, go ahead. We read example 3. In basketball. Teams can score by making two point shots, three point shots, and one point, and one point free throws. What algebraic expression models the total number of points that a basketball team scores in a game? If a team makes ten two point shots, five three point shots, and seven th free throws, how many points does it score in all? Nice. Thank you. Can I just highlight? Yeah. So first step is to write the algebraic expression. 
Anybody have thoughts on variables that we could use here? Well, Three points, three points, and three, three, three throws. Good. So, what variables do you want to use? What letter? Pick a letter. Just one single letter. You get one letter. P. Okay. P <laughs> is for the number of two point shots. How about what do you want to use for three-point shots? T. T for th three-point shots. How about free throws? <laughs> Makes sense. And now I need to write the algebraic expression so I could calculate given any number of shots made. So we're not looking at that yet. We are going to incorporate that in a second, but first we're just going to write the algebraic expression. So we have two-point shots and some unknown number of two-point shots. So that's going to be 2P. And then we have three-point shots, so 3T. Well, we just added all together. Uh-huh. And free throws, that's one point each, so that's just an F. One F or F. Did you have that? So this is the algebraic expression that you should have. Okay. And then we plug in our values for P and T and F. So plugging those in, forty-two points. Good game. On points. Oh, the whole team had that. Sorry. I thought that was one player. That's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Example four. Simplify the algebraic expression by combining like terms. This is the thing I'm good at this. when we are adding and subtracting. Not so much multiplying and dividing. Different rules apply. Remember, like terms. For like terms, that's when we have the same variable to the same exponent. Hmm. So take a look. You probably already know how to do this. This is just a little refresher stuff here. Yeah, but I have one question. Yeah. So since that's a, is that a negative 4? Would I count that as a negative? Yeah. You can count it as a negative or a minus. So 7x squared minus 4x squared, we get 3. <coughs> yep. And then the next one is 5. Uh-huh. So 3x squared plus 5y squared. Last one. First, you have to distribute before you can combine like terms because of those parentheses. So negative times 3k is negative 3k. Negative times m, that's oh. minus m. So you can just multiply just the negative mm -hmm. I've never done that. Yeah, it's pretty neat. That's odd. 2 times k, then that's 2k. 2 times negative 4m, that's minus 8m. And then we've got the negative 3k and the positive 2k. That's going to be negative k, negative 3 plus 2. And then negative m, or you can think about that as a negative 1m minus 8m. Negative 9m, if you forget. We have negatives. If you're, if you're adding together two negatives, mm -hmm. you just add them together, eight, 1 plus 8, and then keep the negative sign, right? So negative 9. So that's it for our guided notes. If you take a look on the back, <laughs> mine's blank. Uh, I've got one right here. Thank you. you have a little translation table here from English to math. There's other things. It's not all inclusive, but there's a lot of help here in case you forget maybe what it means if you see the word quotient. Oh, yeah, that means divide. The opposite of x means throw a negative sign in front. If we say the word 
if we see the word per or x to y or x over y or x part of y, that's going to be a division situation. We've got the at least or no less than. You've got your inequality symbols here. So this could come in handy along the way, so you'll have this in your binder, but today's lesson specifically is going to be having you in Math Excel do some translations from words to math. So that is your notes.